Roll call, please. Alderman Knipe. Here. Alderman Coles. Here. Alderman Pizek. Here. Alderman Shockey. Here. Alderman Subak. Here. Alderman Talamy. Here. Alderman Wesley. Here. Alderman Winger. Mayor Johnson. Here. Quorum being present, would you stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, as you can tell, it's a little bit different up here tonight. This is a student government uh, night. We had a uh, one hour uh, meeting uh, before where we interchanged some ideas with the students and uh, we'll be talking about, a little bit, uh, about that a little bit later. Uh, I understand we're still having some problems with the uh, microphones, so if it gets interrupted at uh, home uh, on the video replay, uh, we're still working on the problem and hopefully we'll have it resolved uh, shortly. That brings us to approval of minutes. May I have a motion to approve the minutes? Second. Is there a motion? So moved. <laughs> and a second. Any comments, corrections, additions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Bill Solomon Coles. I'd like to make a motion to approve the bills. The bills for May 12th, 2006 for $443,467.11. Is there a second? Second. On the question? Question. Alderman Wesley. Uh, page one, is Gary here? Uh, I like the, the answer for the bottom one, uh, Chicago Bridge and Iron. Uh, could you tell me what uh, bridge that was that was repaired for $4,950? That was uh, Bridge on Elizabeth Drive. Chicago Bridge and Iron is the company that manufactured Water Tower Number 2. That's the replacement of Water Tower 2's expansion joint as part of the painting project. Oh, so it was a water tower, not, yeah, it's not a, one of our bridges. No, that it's, it's Tower 2 expansion joint. It's maintenance work that we did during the painting process. What was, can I ask, follow up on that? Was that part of the bid that we approved for the painting and all that, or, or was that, is this beyond that? It's within the budgeted amount, but it's beyond JETCO's contract. Okay. So JETCO had a certain amount, and then the budget was more than that. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Roll call. Alderman Knipe? Yes. Alderman Coles? Yes. Alderman Pizek? Alderman Pizek. I'm sorry. I was talking to our... Appro that's Alderman fine. Alderman it's Alderman. on approval of bills. So, yes or no? Yes. Okay. Alderman Shockey? Yes. Alderman Talamy? Yes. Alderman West Wesley? Yes. Uh, that passes. Alderman Subak votes yes. I don't think you called me, but that's okay. Any citizens who wish to address the City Council this evening? If so, if you go to the podium and give us your name and address. <coughs> Good evening, my name's Jim Frank. Uh, I live at 337 North Cedar. Uh, I'd like to see if I couldn't get an update on the, the sidewalk issue that was approved approximately three years ago for the 300 block of uh, Cedar. Uh, Mr. Holm? This is one that I kind of walked into the middle of. Um, I understand that council did approve the sidewalk for Cedar a number of years ago and that it had never been constructed. Uh, it's not an item that's specifically identified in this year's budget. Um, we do, as you know, um, have in progress right now our roadway project, which is in excess of a $2 million project. Um, that, that is basically scheduled to begin in early June. Uh, I'm anticipating, as with most roadway projects, um, that the cost of the as-built project won't be the same as the cost of the, the bid project. Could be higher, could be lower. And uh, we've, we've stated that you know, if the project does come in lower, that would give us funds to complete the subject sidewalk. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Williams. Yes, if I could, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to add that we did research this, and he is correct, there was approval for the sidewalk 
apparently at the time when the other work was done, um, there was some controversy and some misunderstanding. This happened um, a few years ago. And you know, what we'll try to do is uh, go back and see if we can make this a priority, as Mr. Holm has said. Um, but at that particular time, I believe the project did run out of money, and that was the reason why it did not go forward. Well, I know, I know they hey, let were me, approved. Sir, just a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Because we may have a solution for you. Alderman Subang? We had approved that project, but it was always subject to funding. And that year that we got your petitions, we were mid-budget year. It didn't make it into the budget that year. It didn't make it into the budget the following year, and unfortunately didn't make it into the budget this year. Uh, one of the things we're focusing on next year is doing less of the road reconstructions and more just resurfacings. We think that'll have money available in next year's budget. I've been talking to Alderman uh, Wesley about it. He's been reminding me of it almost weekly to try to get this in the budget for next year for sure, because we're going to be doing some of the resurfacing projects. If we pass a referendum come November, I, can, I can't personally guarantee it, but it is a much better chance if we get that referendum money from the sales tax increase that we'll be able to do the sidewalk project. Alderman Tommy. I just want to reiterate that, you know, I am aware, okay, and we've talked on the phone, and as I said, one of the things that I tried to do, and I've talked with Gary and I've talked with the city manager as well, we are going to see if we don't have to wait till next year. If we can, we will, we will make every attempt to try and see if we can get it done by the fall of this year. We should have a good handle on, as, as Gary had said, on the cost, what the roads are going to cost, really cost, so if we have excess money or not, if we have excess funds available, it will get done this year. If not, it will get done next year. Yes, sir. Okay. It, the, when, they, when we did bring, you know, the issue forward and had everybody on the block sign a petition agreeing, you know, and, and there was a large majority that wanted the sidewalks, it was basically for a safety issue. And just last week, a young man got struck by a car in the 300 block. So I think it's something that, you know, if it can't be squeezed into the budget and it just gets shoved to the roadside, maybe something should be done to put a separate budget aside for something like that and plan for that. I think there's a high priority item with the city council. And if one of our projects does come in under budget, uh, normally we do our current sidewalk work in the fall, Mr. Holm. We'll be doing in sidewalk work in the fall, correct? So hopefully we'll still be at it, be able to add and get it done this calendar year for you. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. Does anyone else wish to address the city council this evening? Hearing none, I do have a uh, couple of written communiques. First one is Dear Mayor Johnson. Uh, I wanted to let you know how much we rely on the use of the Wooddale Dial-A-Ride service. It's a fantastic service. Uh, Stephanie is in a wheelchair and on life support. Uh, we started using Dial-A-Ride program because of the school's uh, transportation laid law was horrible. Uh, not only uh, were they constantly late, uh, laid law continued to send a large bus after I demanded they send a smaller bus. Uh, Steph's nurse at the time reported that she felt Steph in her wheelchair we're not safe on the bus because of the huge bounce on the bus. Uh, I took a ride with Steph and agreed. Uh, it was actually scary. Uh, after several meetings with the school, I suggested the Dial-A-Ride program and uh, Wooddale agreed. Uh, it has been a great relief to know that Steph has being, was being transported safely to and from school by the Dial-A-Ride program for the last four years. Uh, I hope that the service and the hours continue as they are. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to be able to contact me. Signed, uh, Karen J. Uh, Birdie. Also had a request from uh, muscular dystrophy uh, for a representative of the city of Wooddale to attend a fundraising uh, benefit at uh, Dave and Buster's. They have several hours available. Uh, is there anyone who would like to uh, volunteer? I Nominate should, Alderman uh, Wesley. Uh, I should warn you, as part of the process, they come out and arrest you, uh, take you to Dave and Buster's, put you in jail, and you are not released until you raise X amount of dollars. Alderman Wesley. <laughs> so if anybody's interested, please uh, contact me after the meeting. Uh, that brings me to uh, Mayor's report. 
uh, proclamation, uh, whereas the annual distribution of buddy poppies by the veterans of foreign wars of the United States has been officially recognized and endorsed uh, by government leaders since 1992. And whereas the VFW buddy poppies are assembled by disabled veterans and the proceeds of this worthy fundraising campaign are used exclusively for the benefit of disabled and needy veterans and the widows and orphans of deceased veterans. And whereas the basic purpose of the annual distribution of buddy poppies by the veterans of foreign wars is eloquently reflected in the desire to honor the dead by helping the living. Now, therefore, I, Kenneth P. Johnson, Mayor of the City of Wooddale, do hereby urge the citizens of this community to recognize the merits of this cause by contributing gener generously to its support through your donations for Buddy Poppies on the days of May 18th, 19th, and 20th, 2006, set aside for distribution of these symbols of appreciation for the sacrifices of our honored dead. I urge all patriotic citizens to wear a buddy poppy as mute evidence of our gratitude to the men and women of this country who have risked their lives in defense of the freedoms which we continue to enjoy as American citizens. Uh, which also reminds me of the uh, Memorial Day Parade which we'll be celebrating in uh, Wooddale. It promises that it's gonna be the biggest and best that we've ever had. Uh, my understanding, uh, Mr. Butis has arranged for uh, six bands uh, to be participating in the uh, parade. So hopefully the weather will cooperate with us this year. Hopefully not. Uh, as you notice, tonight is uh, Student Government Night, and uh, we had the opportunity to meet with the uh, students and uh, hear, uh, answer their questions and get their views on some of the things that we could do to uh, make Wooddale a better place. And now that we are on uh, cable TV here, and this will be forever broadcast, uh, I think we would like to hear uh, some of your words of wisdom. So who has? They did not know we were going to do this. Uh, let's start right to left. What thoughts or questions do you have for us tonight? Um, <laughs> I don't know. And one of the things we tell the alderman, you have to use the microphone. It's supposed to be within four inches and speak loudly and... Uh, Alderman Shockey would help you with that. This is not fair. <laughs> well, in that case, we'll go and we'll start with the mayor. That's fine. We'll give you time to think. <laughs> well, I, I believe that uh, the government or the uh, city government could do more in ways of entertaining the younger kids. I know I have little cousins that are always at my house. And there doesn't seem to be enough playgrounds and parks and stuff to keep them occupied all the time. That sounds like a good question for Alderman Subak to respond to. The park district's number is, no. Uh, no, I, I agree, uh, uh, but the functions of the park district in the city sometimes get blurred, but uh, we have been active when they did the subdivision near Ash Woods. They did a kitty park, uh, and it's ideal for walking for children. Uh, and I know that the park district is actively always looking for parks. Uh, we're looking to do some passive activities near Salt Creek always, and also near the reservoir at Wooddale Road and School Street to someday possibly do uh, recreational activities there, including like paddle boats and fishing and the like. All right, who else has a, I won't force you all to talk. Who, has, who else has a question or a comment? Alderman Pizak, you don't qualify as a young student, but go ahead. I understand, but, but I like to see this, that they're obviously happy residents of Woodale and Dunsonville, so <laughs> they have nothing to challenge us with. That's a good thing. You want to share some of the things we talked about? I personally think you guys have they're doing a good job with I never understood what aldermen's actually have to do and what you have to go through with like the Irving Park Road and the railroad and everything I think you guys are doing a really good job and I just have to say I think the dog park is pretty cool that we have in Wooddale <laughs> so I don't know I wish we could take credit for that but uh, thank you for that it's another uh, park district innovation I agree with the dog park comment <laughs> Um, also about, um, oh no, 
just forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I think her comment, she said we need to do more road projects. She thought that we're really light on road projects. She didn't quite understand why we'd want to save money if the road projects are going up each year. We should do them now this year is what she was telling me before she got microphone shy. Uh, don't cry, Chuck. Any other comments or I questions? Right All right. Uh, I guess I'll finish out the uh, comments here. Um, let's see. Uh, I believe the uh, the new condos by uh, Giorgio's that are going to be built uh, will be a good addition to Wooddale uh, because it. Sorry, yeah, a little nervous here. Okay. Anyway, uh, I think it will be uh, a good source of revenue. Uh, it'll bring more people to the city of Wooddale and. Uh, hopefully, like I said, bring some money to this town even though we make, hopefully make a lot. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? Well, we thank you for coming and participating. I think we have a certificate uh, that we want to give you. Uh, Ralph, are you handling it? Do you have some comments you want to make, Ralph? You want to go to the microphone? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, there are a couple of things that I would like to mention. First of all, one of my fellow members, Fred Benjes, is here. I'd like Fred to stand up as moral support to this group. And um, we couldn't do this program without uh, the help of Mimi Anderson from the city of Wooddale, George uh, Musman from Benton High School, and George couldn't be here tonight. So in his place, the superintendent, Alf Logan, has agreed to come. Mr. Logan, would you stand, please? Thank you for your assistance and the schools for this program. And Mr. May, I have some certificates that I'd like to present to the student government persons. Uh, please do so. May I approach? Absolutely. Uh, John Kawa, Mr. Mayor, would you like to give these out? Yes. Yeah. Why don't you give them to the aldermen and then they can present right. it to. Uh, yeah. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And we have Sandy Finnegan. Where's Sandy? Oh, there she is. Is this Ben here? Okay. And who's his alter ego here? Either or you. Either or. or. And Ted, Ted's not here tonight. Good. Shana, the, the girl that was I think it's fantastic that these young people are taking interest in government. And they also have the opportunity of being going to boys' state and girls' state. Now, the boys' state gentlemen I have pretty much arranged with Mr. Musman. And I want to tell you girls, you're eligible to go, but we don't have a co-ed system quite yet. Where's the mayor? Roger. Thank you, Ralph. We appreciate All the work, the fine work that the American Legion does on this project, too. Um, you know, you have the superintendent sitting here as your last shot if you want to do any uh, words that might impress them, might affect your grades here a little bit. Any uh, 
final comments or any questions you want to make, sound intellectual here. Uh, we do have Alf Logan, superintendent of Fenton High School, with us tonight, and I have asked him if he would uh, say a few words. Thank you, uh, Mayor Johnson. It's always a joy to come to the uh, city of Wooddale and, and uh, visit your, with your wonderful board. This is a great experience for our students, and I'm standing in for Dr. Musman th this evening. He's basically the fellow that heads up our uh, National Honor Society and has done a great job in finding the students to, to meet with you as well tonight. But as we know, all politics are local, and uh, <laughs> our students get a chance to, to uh, develop some insights into what it takes to run a city in a town, in an organization, and uh, w with a multiple variety of needs. And obviously, things get political when, there's, when you've got to uh, prioritize funds for projects, and uh, it's important to keep that in mind. No one always likes the decisions one makes, but uh, you try to do what's fair for everyone, and, and uh, that's part of politics and part of running a, a town and a village board. So we appreciate your support and allowing our students to participate in this way. I think it's a great experience for our kids. They get to see what's really happening in their local hometown. So thanks for having us. And we're obviously gonna wrap up another school year shortly. I think it's about uh, two weeks till graduation. I think it is, isn't it? Yeah. I know the kids probably probably have a sense for that better than I. But You're probably uh, counting down the days, the hours. The hours, the minutes, yeah. So uh, yeah, our school year is rapidly coming to an end. And it's hard to believe. It seems like we just started the 90, the 2005, 2006 school year. And of course, Mimi Anderson is on my board, so she's my boss. And uh, so we get a chance to interact uh, educationally as well as talk about what's happening in Wooddale. So again, thanks for having us. Thank you. One of the great things you get to do as mayor is acknowledge and honor uh, people who have done service to the, uh, for the community and for the citizens of Wooddale. Frank, would you come and uh, join me? Our city manager, former uh, police chief, uh, former patrolman, uh, former assistant city manager, uh, has served 35 years with the uh, city of Wooddale. Uh, he started the police department in, uh, with the police department in May of 1971. Uh, in 1976, he became chief of police. Uh, the department at that time had three squad cars and uh, 16 police officers. Uh, some of the things that Frank has done over his term uh, as police chief, uh, in some of the few things, there's a five pages of things here that I could talk about, uh, but in 1982 and 1983, he served as president of the Wooddale Lions Club. In, uh, he has presented to the 36th International Congress on Alcohol and Drug Dependence, a uh, countywide approach to fighting alcohol and drug abuse in Glasgow, Scotland. He was the guest lecturer. Uh, 2003 to present, he doesn't have enough abuse being city manager of the city of Wooddale. He also serves as president of the Seven Bridges Estates Homeowners Association. Uh, he's a lifetime member of the uh, Wooddale VFW. Former Midwest director, did you know this? Of the U.S. Karate Association. Uh, current uh, Welfare Secretary of the Salvation Army in Wooddale. Uh, he's been serving in that from uh, 1984 to present and continues to serve in that capacity. Uh, Frank is former past president of the DuPage Police Chiefs Association. Uh, Frank was a presenter uh, at the Southwest Regional Center for Drug-Free Schools and Communities, Community Oriented Policing at the University of Oklahoma in 1994. He was a presenter, a speaker at the International Council on Alcohol Treatment and Addictions in Berlin, Germany in 1990 on the subject of a community working together combating substance abuse. Frank serves currently as an instructor from 1986 to present at uh, Aurora University on the subject of criminal justice management. And uh, Frank served as acting manager uh, the city of Wooddale in 1978, giving a little bit of training for his current duties. Uh, during these 29 years, he served as police, uh, chief of police 
He professionalized the department. Uh, membership grew to 33 police officers and 18 civilian employees. It's a nationally accredited, uh, not only in police operations, but also in the communications sections. Few police agencies in DuPage County have achieved this level of performance for professional conduct. He developed four of his subordinates, four people under Frank, later became police chiefs in other departments. Uh, this speaks volumes of his ability to develop leadership and establish highly efficient and effective organizations. Upon retirement from the police department, uh, he established himself as the one of the, or is it the longest serving police chief in DuPage County. Uh, Frank was raised in Itasca and uh, after graduation from Lake Park High School, uh, served in the uh, military prior to becoming a policeman in Wooddale. And one of the things you probably do not know about Frank Williams, if you will ask any of the older, or the, I shouldn't say older police officers, those police officers who have served with the city of Wooddale for a considerable amount of time, Alderman Pizek will probably know this, my understanding, Frank Williams has a reputation for making excellent snow angels. Do you want to explain that, Frank? I don't think I really want to comment on that. <laughs> it, it goes back to a long time ago where I had this thing about being serious and never losing control and everything like this. And we went out one day after, after shift. And I showed the guys that I could drink with them fine and everything like that. So they brought me home. And they didn't know what to do because they were afraid at the time my wife wouldn't be too happy because I might have had one or two. But I wasn't drinking. And they stood me up on the side, and they found me laying there, uh, kind of relaxed in the snow. And they made a big deal out of it because it was so much out of character. But um, it was no big thing. <laughs> Presented to Frank E. What's E stand for? Eldridge. Eldridge? Eldridge Williams, in recognition of your 35 years of outstanding service and dedication to the citizens of Wooddale as a patrol officer, police chief, and city manager, from 1971 to 2006, your efforts have made a significant impact on improving the quality of life for this community. Congratulations, Thank Frank. You. Sure. You. Um, First things first, I would like to introduce my wife who's here in the audience. Uh, Joan, would you please stand up? <laughs> and of course, I, I, would, I would like to thank you all for this great honor. I'm very fortunate to have been able to work in the various capacities as mentioned by the mayor. And to serve and, and get an opportunity to serve as the current city manager. Wooddale's been very good to me, and I tell everybody that every day. And I, I am, I think, very grateful. But I'm, I'm also grateful to our, all of our citizens who I've worked for, who have given me direction and support. Our elected officials, our current, of course, who've given me this great opportunity, but our past elected officials as well. And of course, all the employees in the city that I have, I've had the honor to work with, Jim Pizek, for example, we, we almost started at the same time together when we were patrolmen on the street. Um, the department heads, uh, we go back many, many years. And each year, they keep getting better. And I'm, I'm sure that now we have the best possible team that you could have. But who knows, later on it, it will continue on, and, and I think I've been very fortunate. I would like to thank everyone for their support and guidance, and I could, it would take me three or four hours to go through my list. Almost everywhere you look, there's somebody, whether it's, it's um, Alf Logan here, um, Bob Gatke there, Almost everybody has given me support. It's just kind of overwhelming. And even Casey, uh, through the years, uh, telling me what people think and, and things like this. 
And I basically believe that each citizen is my boss and that the city council and, of course, the mayor, they're my bosses. But also the employees, they're all my bosses. And that's how I approach it. And I've been very blessed. I would like to thank each person, again, individually, but I'll save that for when I retire. <laughs> I'll make... <laughs> um, I'd just like to say one thing in closing. You don't remain as a team leader without a lot of very capable and dedicated people helping you along the way. So again, I would just like to say thank you, everyone, for your help and support and putting up with me for all these years. Thank you. Uh, we have some cake and coffee in the uh, cafeteria, so without objection, Council, we stand in recess.